friends, today we are going to do something about this part of my workshop that has been screaming for me to do something about it. So this is what my battery charger space looks like and it definitely, definitely needs some help. So I do have the usual suspects, my Milwaukee, my Ryobi, and a couple of DeWalt chargers. I do have a couple other DeWalt chargers that I put away because you don't need that many DeWalt chargers out here and I can use them somewhere else if I need to. So these are the four that I most commonly use. Plus I also have chargers like these that basically go onto the battery to charge it. So I need a solution for this. And we also have the Ryobi 40 volt battery and the charger. And apart from that, I also need a spot to charge the batteries for my camera, etc. So we need to create a solution for that. And I do have space on the wall right here that is asking for a battery charging station. So let us build that. But before we get started, if you are new here, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I've got lots of fun projects coming. And I do have a free guide to Power Tools called Power Tools Simplified that you can grab in the description below. Now let's get started. I am building this project out of plywood. And as always, I have the full detailed plans in the description below. Now, you could use a straight edge guide for the cuts, but I did not have a guide that was large enough to cut down my sheet of plywood. So I made my own guide using a straight edge, which here is a factory edge of a plywood. I aligned it and used that to guide my circular saw across the cut. For some of the cuts, I used my Craig rib cut, and then I actually finished off a bunch of cuts on my table saw. The detailed cut list is a part of the plans in the description. Now it's time for the pocket holes. So I set up my Craig 720. You can obviously use any other pocket hole jig. I set up the drill bit collar to three quarter inch and the drill to the drill setting. Got my safety glasses on and got ready to make all of the pocket holes. The pocket holes are on both ends of the back as well as on both ends of both the shelves. All right, now let's start putting it together. Now, the first thing we're going to do is attach the back to one of the sides using pocket hole screws. I like using my right angle clamp to make sure everything stays in place. Now it's time to attach the shelves. There are two shelves, so I wanted to measure the spacing between the shelves and make sure to attach the inside shelf first so that I have space to reach in and add the pocket hole screws. I made sure that the shelf was square and even and attached that using pocket hole screws. And then I went ahead and added the bottommost shelf. Now I did realize at this point, it might've been a good idea to add some pocket holes that would attach to the back, but it doesn't really matter because these shelves aren't really going to be holding a lot of weight. They would have just helped keep everything aligned a lot easier. And then I went ahead and attached the second side using pocket hole screws. I also added the screws from the shelves into the side. And for the inside shelf, I had to once again align it. And this could have been prevented if I had had pocket hole screws going into the back in the first place. But I made sure to align it and added those pocket hole screws in. And that is the cabinet. And now we're going to attach the door. The door is going to be attached using hinges, so I use the Craig hinge jig to make the holes for the hinges. You can use regular hinges or you can use these concealed hinges. They're pretty straightforward to attach once you have the template figured out. And I just laid it out on my workbench and attached it to the cabinet. And that is the cabinet build. Now it is time to attach the battery charger. So I brought them all over and played around with the configuration. And once I had decided exactly where everything was going to be, I traced out the outlines using a pencil. I used painter's tape to transfer the location of the screws and added the screws to mount each of the battery chargers.
Once all the battery chargers were in their place, I picked exactly where the wires would be going through into the door and made a large hole using a Forstner bit. I'm using an inch and a half Forstner bit because that is large enough to accommodate the plug. I also made a hole on the side, which is where the power supply cord is going to be coming out of. And then I went ahead and mounted the power strip inside the cabinet. I found this power strip which has eight plug points and two USB ports, so it was perfect for what I needed. Now, one last thing is adding a heavy duty magnetic latch. And here's a little trick. You can use an old lipstick and apply that to the latch. And when you put the door down, press on it, it tells you exactly where that magnetic strip needs to be. And with that, the cabinet is ready to be installed on the wall. So it is time to mount it to the wall. Now I do have a couple of challenges with mounting this to the wall. Number one, the studs are right here and right here. And then there's one very close to the window there. And number two, this is not drywall, so I cannot use a drywall anchor. This is actually just hardboard that's attached to the studs, and that is it. So the solution for a situation like this is adding a cleat. Adding a cleat up here on top and attaching it to the studs so that I can then attach the battery charger. We're actually going to make a French cleat system, which is super easy to make. French cleats on a table saw require just two cuts. The first one at about five inches wide on the plywood. So we make that cut through. And then I set the blade to 45 degrees and made a cut about halfway through that five inch wide plywood. And that is our French cleat. Now, since I was going to be adding a French cleat on this wall, I decided to take that sandpaper organizer off and also add a French cleat to that. Then I measured exactly where the French cleat needed to go and attached that using long screws directly into the studs. I cut up the other part of the French cleat on my miter saw to fit on the back of the charging station cabinet which then I attached using screws. And I also added a spacer to the bottom of the cabinet to make sure that the cabinet stays straight and flat against the wall. And then I hung it up on the wall or the French cleat. And of course, I also added the French cleats to the back of my sandpaper organizer and added that in as well. And now it's time for the final setup. I erased all the pencil marks. I went ahead and added the power strip on the inside and routed out the main wire through the side hole. And it is time to load up those battery chargers. I mounted them all to the front one by one and routed the wires through the holes. I did wrap all of the wires with a cord organizer to keep them looking nice and organized and untangled. I was really curious to try out to see if everything was working fine, which it was. For the smaller battery chargers, I plugged them in and set them on the shelf. And then I added a USB cable for the camera battery chargers and my phone and my Isotunes charger, etc. And now let's load up the rest of these batteries. All of my battery chargers are off of this counter and up here and everything is so much more organized. I've got all the chargers here. I've got the smaller chargers over here that can be plugged in and kept here while they charge. And I also have cords here that I can use to charge my camera and also my phone and we've got extra battery storage. And now I have so much free space on this countertop that I don't know what to do with it. I have to try my best not to let it become a mess gatherer. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.